Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 646. What is your excuse for refusing hormone replacement? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we are going to talk about menopause and your excuse for not taking hormones. Um, Every day I talk to people about hormonal treatments and what we can do to help them with their symptoms. Most of them come back and say, well, those symptoms I didn't even know they had to do with my my, uh, sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone. I didn't know any of that had to do with hormones. No one ever told me that before. And that seems to be one of the excuses they use for not getting hormone replacement therapy after menopause when they need it. That's one that's, pr- that's somewhat valid because if you don't know about something, you can't look for a treatment for it. You, don't, you just think this is getting older. So every time you think, I'm just getting old, you should think, my hormones have failed, and this is what they do to me. They make me old. Because that's really, losing testosterone and estrogen is synonymous with aging for women. So starting with that thought, um, some of the other uh, excuses that I've heard um, over my 20 years or more of doing this is, my doctor told me it was going to cause cancer. I don't want cancer, so I don't want hormones. That is kind of an an invalid excuse because you have one person telling you that it's going to cause cancer. Yes, it's somebody that you go to for advice, but not everybody who is a doctor has has re-educated themselves and kept up with the science. And things that we believed back in the year 2000 are not the same things we believe now about hormones and cancer. In fact, um, by taking both estradiol and testosterone, you actually decrease your risk of cancer of the breast and of all types of cancer because testosterone stimulates the cells from your thymus, which is located behind your breastbone, that actually kill cancer cells. So testosterone stimulates the cells that go after cancer cells when they become cancer. And honestly, we have cancer cells right now forming in our body. We have since we were born and we have these killer T killer cells that go out and kill them. So it's a surveillance system. Our T cells that are in our thymus are very active when we're young and they decrease as we get old, especially after menopause. We can re-stimulate them by taking testosterone. Men do, when they take testosterone, their immune systems improve. When we take testosterone, in any form, but I'll have to I'll have to qualify that. It, the only form I use is testosterone pellets because it's the only form that actually is found to do this in a way that we can measure. So testosterone pellets improve your immune system so you can kill cancer cells just like when you were 30. I'm assuming that you had a normal um, immune system when you were 30, but but when you were younger and before menopause. So that's one thing. The other thing, the other part of that um, excuse is that estrogen causes breast cancer, but estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer. Some breast cancers, some, can be fed or, or stimulated by estrogen, but estrogen itself is not the cause of breast cancer. Usually the biggest risk factors are obesity, alcohol intake, diabetes, not eating properly, poor nutrition. Those are the reasons people get cancer plus their genetics. So sometimes the genetics are overwhelming and you can do everything right and still get cancer, but not often. So that excuse about, yeah, I'm gonna get cancer, 
take that one away. And now what excuse do you have? So then I have an excuse, I hear an excuse of, oh, if I take estrogen, I'm going to gain weight. Well, estrogen isn't really something that makes you gain weight unless you take it orally. If you take it as a patch, if you take it as a pellet, you're not going to gain weight from estrogen. It is basically going to help you not gain more weight by taking estrogen because at menopause, we become insulin resistant. Everybody does. So when we stop making estrogen and testosterone at menopause, we start gaining fat. And part of that has to do with estrone. Estrone is an old lady estrogen from your adrenal gland back here above your kidney. And it kicks in when your testosterone drops. And estrone gives you that belly fat that makes your waistline really big. So that's the first thing. The other thing is estrogen itself, when it drops, it makes you more insulin resistant, which means pre-diabetic, which means you're going to eat hardly anything and still make fat, but you're gonna be tired because your, your um, blood sugar can't get into your cells and make energy. So that's, that's a falsehood. That's something that somebody told you that is absolutely wrong. It'll actually make you healthier to take estrogen after uh, menopause and take testosterone as well. Now, we also give progesterone if you have a uterus, but that's for a whole different reason. Progesterone is a very relaxing hormone. It's one of the hormones of pregnancy, and it actually uh, helps you go to sleep. Testosterone helps you sleep through the night, and estrogen helps you not wake up from hot flashes. So sleep is integral and uh, extremely important to our health. And if you aren't sleeping, if you have insomnia, the best sleeping pill is to take your estrogen, your testosterone, and your progesterone. Some of my patients who have had a hysterectomy even take progesterone just so that they can fall asleep. So that is an answer to, I'm tired, nothing's going to make me any better. How about, oh, my doctor told me I'm depressed, so I'm taking an antidepressant. Well, did that make you feel any better? You, sh you need to, <laughs> what people don't really think about is, okay, I went to the doctor for this problem. I got this drug. I'm taking this drug. Did it work? Some people just take the drug because the doctor told them to, but it's not making them any better. And in general, for all of the things that menopause causes, um, antidepressants do either nothing or they just make us not care. And so we don't do anything else to find an answer to our problems. One of the other problems is that we don't always know all the symptoms that are caused by lack of estrogen and testosterone. So let me go through the list. Lack of estrogen gives you hot flashes. It gives you a dry vagina and painful intercourse or makes intercourse impossible because lack of estrogen makes the vagina get very small and very um, it's much like tissue paper, so it'll tear if you try to stretch it. So that's lack of estrogen. It also, lack of estrogen also gives you night sweats and dry skin. Um, lack of testosterone gives you no sex drive, no motivation to get things done. Things just start piling up around the house or at your office. Uh, fatigue, depression, and anxiety. But that depression is not made better with antidepressants, by the way. Uh, it's only made better with testosterone. Uh, change in your body composition. When you lose testosterone, you lose muscle, and you gain fat in its place. So you become either skinny fat or just fat fat. So that's a problem. 90% or more of your calories are burned in your muscles. When you lose muscle, you lose the ability to burn calories. Um, so m loss of muscle mass and strength. I always have people at the gym who are my age but don't take hormones, and they, they work out all the time. And they work out with weights, and they also work out with, um, with aerobic exercise like ellipticals. But they can't make muscle anymore because if you don't have testosterone, it's almost impossible to make any muscle. So when they're doing this, they're losing fat and muscle. It's, it's the weirdest thing, but without testosterone, you just aren't going to be able to grow muscle. So if that's what you want, you're going to have to get your hormones replaced. Um, without... Uh, testosterone, believe it or not, you're irritable and you bite people's heads off and it makes you very difficult to live with. And that's one of the things that most um, husbands complain about. Besides the lack of sex drive, it's irritability. 
But when we get our testosterone, believe it or not, we get very smooth and things don't bother us as much. So not that we have to be, <laughs> we have to take whatever's thrown at us, but it's easier for us to cope. Um, without testosterone we, and estrogen, we lose the, the ability to recall names, places, basically I call it label recall, labels of things. That part of our brain doesn't get blood flow after testosterone and estrogen go down. So sadly, we're always having someone else finish our sentences. So that's something that happens when we don't have those hormones anymore. It usually takes a little while after menopause, but it does happen and it does reverse itself if it has not been, uh, if you've not been without hormones for too long, which would be like 10 years, it reverses itself completely and you can get that ability back. Um, you, loss of testosterone decreases your ability to problem solve. Like, oh, your kid comes in, tells you all the stuff that happened at school, and mom, what do I do? Well, can't think of anything. That's a problem. <laughs> and not that you would have a little kid, but say it's a college kid, it gets more complicated. So problem solving's big, and it's, it's usually very important to most of our jobs. Uh, we lose the ability to see in 3D. So if you're an interior designer or a pilot or an architect, your ability to actually see on, from a, a paper drawing the, the 3D image, which is important, um, goes away. And you have to struggle to do your job. Um, we talked about insomnia. Without testosterone, you don't get deep sleep and you don't feel rested. So when you wake up, it feels like you just hadn't slept at all. That, is, that makes you tired the rest of the day or you have fatigue. And the only thing that's going to fix that, not sleep, sleeping pills, but testosterone is going to fix that. It brings you back to REM and deep sleep. So you dream and you have a much deeper sleep so it's restful to your body, which is important to your health. Uh, without estrogen and testosterone, you'll get some form of arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis as usual, not autoimmune arthritis, although autoimmune diseases are much more common after testosterone becomes uh, very low. So testosterone kind of helps modulate our immune system. And last but not least, body pain all over. Most of my patients complain that when they, like, they try to get out of bed or they try to get out of a chair, they hurt all over. And some people are, are labeled with fibromyalgia. Well, that's just low testosterone. And if they, when they get their testosterone back, then they actually lose that pain all over their body. It's amazing. So... Now you know all the symptoms. Now you know the symptoms of low estrogen and low testosterone. So when you talk to your healthcare provider, you know that if you develop these in the 10 years before menopause and after, then you need help and hormones, the sex hormones, which is estrogen and testosterone, will help. Um, but if you're not concerned about how you feel today, which you should be, because it, it will alter all forms, all parts of your life, your friendships, your family, your work. Uh, but if you're not, then you should look ahead and say, do I want to have the diseases of aging? Because the diseases of aging, if you've never really kind of thought about that, the diseases that hit uh, people who are getting older, like over 60, osteoporosis, testosterone and estrogen, treat that. You don't need other drugs. Um, heart disease and stroke. Testosterone and estrogen lower your um, inflammation, and they also lower your LDL cholesterol. So that helps prevent that. It also keeps your blood vessels open and helps, testosterone helps the blood vessels dilate. So they make nitric oxide, which then prevents stroke. Uh, diabetes is much more common in people after menopause and after a loss of estrogen, and it gets better when we add their hormones back. Alzheimer's disease and dementia, if you've watched your parents or your grandparents have that, you don't ever want that. Um, obesity, we talked about that. Um, low muscle mass, inability to walk, inability to stand up, inability to get yourself around the house, that's going to that's gonna change your whole life. If you can't live independently, then it's expensive and it is also painful. And your family is going to be miserable. <laughs> Um, autoimmune diseases increase with la lack of testosterone. 
Um, some of my patients come in with lack of blood flow to their extremities. That can be from blocking of their arteries, but it also can be from diabetes or just poor blood flow and poor muscle, muscle tone. Um, gout does increase after menopause if you don't treat it, and worsening depression and anxiety. So all of these things are diseases of being old. And if you want to avoid them, instead of just get old and have to treat them with multiple, with a polypharmacy, then you can do some preventive medicine and actually take the hormones now and allow your body to be replenished with the hormones that they've always used and always needed. So if your excuses are, I'm afraid, I'm not sure, um, my doctor says no, um, my girlfriend had breast cancer, that has nothing to do with you. You need to make your decision yourself and you need to decide if you want to survive in a healthy fashion or if you want to just give up at this point which with half your life left. So I advise you to not give up and to uh, get your life back by getting your hormones replaced. And I'm an advocate of estrogen and testosterone repellents because they are the very best way to get your hormones back. The most like having your ovary replaced and active. So if you want the best method of replacing your hormones. Estrogen and testosterone pellets are the way, and you can avoid these symptoms, treat the symptoms without other drugs, usually, and, tr and prevent the diseases that may happen later. So please listen, I don't wanna watch you guys suffer. You should be able to do this, make your decision, find a doctor. If the doctor says no, find another doctor. So just use your feet, vote with your feet. And so, Please hear me, please get better, and please have a very full and happy last half of your life. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.